Today I'll be discussing how I use the concept of PV loops in time domain to determine the importance of having an ECG sensor in a device designed for congestive heart failure. Something I want to mention is that this portion of the project was conducted and completed before the topic of ECG was covered in class. On the screen now is a diagram of the pressure volume loop. This specifically represents the left ventricular pressure volume relationship. Compliance is used to describe the relaxation abilities of the left ventricle and is fundamental in diastolic function. As I have talked about before, patients who suffer from congestive heart failure generally have a lower compliance due to the thickening of the ventricle walls. This leads to a higher end diastolic volume and a smaller stroke volume. These effects change the way the pressure volume loop looks. It causes the loop to appear taller, which represents a greater amount of work done by the heart in order to pump the blood. Relating this to Frank Starling's Law of the Heart, the curve for patients with congestive heart failure follows their red lines, which means the afterload is larger. The ECG is ultimately affected as well. With a smaller stroke volume, the ejection and relaxation portions of the ECG are shorter, which leads to smaller P and T waves. With the heart working harder to contract, the QRS complex would appear greater as well. With the ECG capturing these arrhythmias in the heart, our group has determined that an ECG sensor is necessary in our device. The ECG sensor combined with the heart rate sensor should be able to catch any arrhythmias that indicate a life-threatening change in the heart. 